guys, how's it going? So there's quite a number of things I wanna get planted outside today. I've been hardening off all of my seedlings that I started inside, so I'm gonna plant the tomatoes at least today, and I'll show you the white geraniums that I started from seed, and they look amazing. I already repotted them into terracotta pots. So I'll show you those here in a second, but I'm also gonna be planting some annual flowers, maybe even a tree and some lettuce starts. So my first thing are the tomatoes, which I have right in front of me. So they look pretty good. I only started four. This one's leaning a little bit, which is not a big deal because I usually bury them up quite a ways on their stem because like right here, if I bury this one up to like this point right here, it will create roots along its stem, especially at the nodes where the leaf meets the stem there, and it'll be a stronger plant for it. It's called Cherry Falls. And Cherry Falls are a dwarf-sized tomato plant. They're really ideal for containers or hanging baskets, and they produce cherry tomatoes. I've never personally tried this variety, but I thought it would be really fun. So I have two hanging baskets here that I'm gonna plant two of these starts in, and then I'll probably give the other two away uh, to my parents or to my in-laws, uh, whoever wants to take them. So these are the baskets baskets here, they're 18 inch diameter and they're pretty deep as well. And they've got this cocoa fiber liner, but it's pretty thick and I find that it works pretty well and we'll probably hook them up onto drip. Um, then I'll be putting in some potting mix and my Biotone starter fertilizer. And our temperatures are just wonderful right now. I think the lowest it's supposed to get is like high 40s, low 50s. So I'm gonna actually um, pot these tomatoes up. I'm gonna leave them in the greenhouse here for just a few days just to let them kind of settle in a bit and then I'll put them outside in a sunny spot. So let's get these planted real quick. That was a pretty quick project and I'm guessing it won't be long until they're completely filling these containers and starting to spill over the sides. And I did bury, I, I don't know, like maybe four inches of stem below each one of these. Um, so that stem, like I said, will create roots and will have a really nice, strong, healthy plant. Uh, so these right here are the hangers. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these hung in the greenhouse here and give them some water. They're all tucked in and watered, and I know they don't look like much right now, but I expect here in the next couple of weeks, they'll start to look really good. Now let me show you the geraniums I started. And here they are, don't they look so sweet? You know, I could have probably fertilized these a little bit more than I did when they were younger, but just kind of like with the tomatoes, I expect that now that they're outside where they really prefer to be, they'll start putting on a whole bunch of new growth and they'll be on a fertilizing schedule with all of my outside plants, which is more regular than inside. These are the Cherry Brandy Rudbeckia. I think I missed an entire six pack because not a single thing germinated in that one and that's not typical. So I think I missed that one, but all in all, I'm really happy with how many I've got and they're starting to put on some really big leaves. And then right here is the sweet basil that I started and I've actually cut this one back quite a number of times and they are so fragrant and so beautiful and healthy. Look at those. Here are the snapdragons. So we did a thinning video and a pinching back video and this is what they look like right now. Super wonderful, like check this out. This right here is one plant. So that's where I trimmed it back right to there and it's put on these two great big tall branches which I could pinch again but I'm getting really close to planting these out in the landscape. Um, so that's really exciting. But I'm not gonna plant any of those seedlings out today. This is what I kinda wanna focus on because they're getting a little bit too big for their packs. I brought home some four packs from the garden center um, a while ago. And you can see like, look at this. When you actually separate them, they don't look that great. Looks great when they're all like jammed together. But I need to get these separated. I'm going to plant them in one of my flower beds along with some red cabbage, which I used to do a lot in my old garden. And I thought I would kind of use these kind of inexpensive crops to fill in some space out there. Um, so that will be really fun. And then I've got a flat of white cosmos. These are the Sonata white. So they grow like 20 to 24 inches tall and about a foot wide. I like this foliage a lot. And then I wanted to be able to cut these really pretty white flowers. And I also have my diatomaceous earth when we come across the anthills. And while we're at it, I'll go ahead and plant up this flat of Iberus. Here is the tag, Snow Station. I wanted to stop really quick on our way up to the front flower bed and show you this little spot right here because it's looking so beautiful. 
the redbud tree in bloom, the lilac is starting to bloom, the tulips right behind this area, right around the angel, are in bloom. Such a gorgeous time. Oh, and I can hear the honeybees. Also through here, the Korean spice viburnum, I think is blooming better than it ever has the whole time we've been living here. Oh, also this, <laughs> look at these. And the hellebores are still looking beautiful. So this front flower bed, I think is where I'm gonna work in the lettuce and the cosmos. You can see the clear water tulips are blooming and I love how these worked out. I love how they were planted in just little bunches. It looks very natural to me. And um, I did recently plant some lemon balm in here and delphiniums here and back in there and the three forsythias and some rogue red tulips. I thought I got them all out of here, but th that bunch, I'll let them bloom because, you know, bless their hearts. <laughs> um, and then this is the Centara double blue lilac. Planted this last year in the middle of a storm and I am so thrilled with this plant. So there's some like 12 or 15 different varieties of lilac uh, out there. And this happens to belong to the group of lilacs that are the most fragrant. And it is like, it just hits you like a wall of perfume up here. And I love it because it's one of my favorite spring smells. And the fact that the blooms are double makes it extra awesome. Again, that variety is Centara Double Blue and I think it's fairly newish. So if you happen to find it, I would snag it and get it planted in your garden. Okay, so let's talk about where I put the Cosmos first because it, this seems to be a really popular question about whether or not you can plant around where your tulips are and how you go about doing that. So typically I like to wait until my flower beds are fairly established uh, before I go in with tulip bulbs. So they're, they're fairly full of perennials and shrubs and things that will last for the rest of the season. And that way I know where everything's at and it's easy to tuck uh, tulip bulbs in and around your plants that are already there. If you go in like I did with my kitchen flower bed, I had a ton of labella poc tulips planted in there. It was gorgeous. But then I decided I wanted to change up where all the perennials were. I wanted to add some more color in. Um, so I disrupted a lot of where my tulip bulbs were. Every time I dug a hole, I would, you know, inevitably pop four or five tulip bulbs up out of the ground and I'd replant them or I'd accidentally cut some in half. Um, so that bed is going to have to be replenished with tulip bulbs this fall because I did that last summer. And this spring, the, the tulip show in that bed is really quite sad compared to what it has been in the past. So in this bed, I'm kind of popping some annuals in around the tulips. Let me show you because I just started developing this bed. So that's kind of why I didn't do a huge drift. I just did kind of tulips in bunches, which I kind of like almost better um, than planting them in huge drifts. Anyway, so what I'm gonna do is you can see I've got my Cosmos placed kind of in and around where the tulip bulbs are because these in just a short time, I'll be deadheading the bloom stalk. So I'll take the bloom stalk down all the way to about here and then I'll wait until the foliage is starting to turn yellow and die back and kind of flop over to cut them all the way back down at the ground. So eventually these tulips will not even be here. Like you won't even see them probably I would guess maybe a month, month and a half. And that way the cosmos will be planted and they'll start to grow and kind of take over this area so that I'll have something in place once the tulips are gone. So you can see I placed seven around this bunch. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then back in here, I kind of tucked, how many, six right in this little uh, open spot here, but I do have delphiniums and some uh, red valerian. There's also some daylilies and viola in here. It's just a really pretty flower bed, I think. And then the third grouping of cosmos is right here, kind of in and around these tulips. And this bench really isn't a functioning bench. You can see the, the top is kind of flaking off. It's not like super safe to sit on. So I'm going to be planting all around it to kind of shroud it. Like I kind of want it to just be poking up out of perennials. Um, because I do like the lines of that bench quite a bit and I want it there, but I don't want ne anybody necessarily sitting on it. And then the red cabbage, I'm going to put one here. There'll be one there, there, one there, one back tucked back in there where are the rest, and then a couple right in there. And then I'm going to do a grouping of lettuce right in there. And cabbage plants are such an excellent way to take up a lot of space, at least for a couple of months. Like those, I think the maturity day, 
I think it's like 75 day. I don't know, they'll last probably through June and they'll take up a good amount of space. They'll look really pretty and it was really inexpensive. I think it was like $2 or under $2 for the four pack. So anyway, let me get my supplies and get these things planted. All planted and watered in. I ended up moving the lettuce from this section over to this area right here where I did plant a red cabbage. But I think everything's gonna fill in beautifully right here. And I left this space here and that space back in there. And of course, all of this space right here for other plants that I am planning to put in hopefully this year. But the red cabbage ended up pretty staggered which I think will be beautiful. So I've got one, two, three, four five, six, seven. So I've got five cabbage and the flat of Iberus still to find a spot for. So I'm up in Versailles right now in this corner bed that we've been working on and what I'm seeing it's lacking is spring color. Now I will come in later with some tulips and uh, start adding that kind of color in but I think it would be pretty to plant this Iberus kind of underneath some of these shrubs because I've got a lot of shrubs and larger perennials. These are poppies that grow quite large and there's like delphiniums and things that grow taller. So it'd be pretty to look in here and see some lower color in here. And these grow six to eight inches tall and 12 inch spacing. So I think it would be really pretty back in here. While we're up here, let me show you how this Amsonia is doing. I planted this a little while ago and it was from some of the perennials that I wintered over in the greenhouse. And they're looking amazing. Like they're just sending up their bloom stalks so they haven't opened or anything yet. You can see all of those just getting ready to open. It's gonna be gorgeous. Hey, what are you what are you doing? Hi, buddy. You're a good boy, huh? Also, the pink flowering dogwood is just starting to bloom as well up here. Look at how beautiful that is. Mm -hmm. I really like it back in there and I think it's gonna work out perfect because even though it stays really low, like this time of year, all the taller stuff will just be breaking dormancy and it won't be covering the view to the back. So that will be allowed to shine through. But then once it's done blooming, that'll be about the time when the poppies and the other things, there's oak leaf hydrangeas in there, will start really broadening out and leafing out and kind of shrouding the view to that area, which is totally fine because I don't really care for the foliage of that plant. Um, I really just wanted it for the bloom. But it'll still receive full sun because it does like part to full sun. Uh, and there's nothing really tall on this side that will block it from getting that. So let me get a little closer. So there are the blooms, just huge and bright. But then when you look down in there, the foliage, I mean, it's not bad. It's just not anything like really striking. So now that that's all done and planted, before I do any more planting, which I may or may not get to today, I do wanna go take care of the ants that I saw. And I originally, I think I already said I was gonna be using diatomaceous earth, which I usually use if it's in an area that is not gonna be hit by sprinkler water. But then I realized that this spot, I probably need to use something different that won't need to be reapplied after it gets wet every single time. So I grabbed, this bug and slug killer, which is more of like a grain or a granule. Um, so it's not something you have to reapply after every single time it gets sprinkled. Uh, it's still for organic gardening. It's a iron phosphate spinosad blend as the active ingredient. So anyway, let's head toward the formal garden. That's where the ants are. This gravel area around the fountain back here could really use a fresh layer. It's getting a little bit patchy, but I noticed kind of right in here, do you guys see all those ants? Like, it's not horrible yet, but I wanna take care of the problem before they get really bad. And if I move this way, you can see all of the loose soil that they've kicked up, creating their hill kind of underneath this spot. So I'm just gonna spread this stuff all over this whole area. It really is a kind of a slick way to do it because the ants, they take those pieces of grain, they think they're a food, and they take them down into the hill as a food source and then all the ants eat them and die. I can actually see some of them start to pull, they're starting to work on getting the grain moved. Boy, I put that bait down and all of a sudden all the ants appeared. 
it's crazy. Now that that's done, we'll head to the vegetable garden and do a little work in there. Everything is looking pretty good out here, but what I do want to get done today is weed all of the beds, which they're not bad. There's just a few weeds here and there. I'm going to do a top dress of compost on top of all the beds so that I can hide all the drip tubing and make it look really pretty. And I also need to do a few repairs on the drip tubing because I noticed, especially in this bed, I think I've got a cut in one of the lines. So the water in here is hooked up to our sprinkler system, so I need to turn that zone on to figure out where my problems are in the drip tubing, and then I can get those fixed before I put my layers of compost down. Um, we do have our system hooked up to Ratio, um, which allows you to turn on your irrigation from an app on your phone. Let me show you. So I'm gonna open the Ratio app, and then select Quick Run, and then you find whatever zone it is that you wanna run, which I wanna run zone five, drip for garden, then you select next, and then you can select how long you want it to run for. So I'm doing just one hour there, and then you hit run, but check this out. So this is where I think the leak is, like right about here. So let me hit run and see what happens. Yep, there it is. I can't even express to you guys how helpful Ratio has been to us. Um, and it's not that expensive. I think I think it's like $150 or something like that, but so worth the money. Because before, if we had a problem like this out here, you'd have to run all the way into the house where the irrigation box is and turn it on and then run all the way back out to where you think your leak is, see if it's leaking, and then run back to the house to turn it off. And so it was back and forth, or Aaron and I had to be on our phones, one of us in the house, one of us outside, uh, until we got the problem like figured out. And this way you can just turn it on and off right where you think the problem's at and you don't have to go all over kingdom come to get your problem handled. So now uh, what I'm gonna do is just get a straight coupler and I'm just going to cut this damaged piece of tubing out and then couple together the remaining pieces. All right, let's try it again. Ah, <laughs> did I make it worse? One, two, three leaks now. Well, for crying out loud, I think I need a whole new piece of tubing. All right, let's try this again. I think I'm gonna cut a big section of this tubing away. All right, so what I'm gonna need to do is put a coupler in on this side and a coupler in on the other side, and then a new piece of tubing in between, and we'll see what happens. All right, take two. That's what we're looking for. We just want it to weep. We don't want it to spray all over the place. And I think you learn very quickly when you're dealing with an irrigation system and you're having to do repairs all the time that you should always buy extra parts. Like always, always have extra tubing on hand. Always have extra couplers, elbows, tees, um, like little stoppers. It's so handy to have the right pieces and makes a project that could be frustrating uh, very, very easy. Because I do not like it when I get into the middle of something like this that I don't really wanna be fixing in the first place, but then I have to stop all progress and go to the store for parts. That like makes it 10 times worse. So anyway, my advice is to stock up on parts if you're dealing with an irrigation system like this. But I'm looking through the rest of the garden and I don't see any shooting water anywhere. So I think I can start weeding and and mulching. And I'll give you guys a tour of everything in here at the very end when everything looks nice and pretty with the new mulch. All done and it looks so much better. I can't believe how much uh, just a little bit of mulch makes everything look so clean and the soil looks so rich. And because it's compost, I think I just said mulch, because it's compost, it does have some goodies in it that can work its way down into the soil and give the plants a little boost. So now I'll just walk through real quick and give you an update on how my spring crops are doing. So I'm starting back in the back corner kind of. There are four green cabbage and you guys, I am noticing, look at this. That looks like a little bit of slug damage. So I'm gonna go get some more of that bug bait, the same stuff I used for the ants. I'm gonna sprinkle it around the ground, around my cabbage plants, just to save the rest of them from getting totally munched on. So in this bed right here, I've got a row of spinach that's looking really, really good, and then blizzard snow peas, which aren't looking super great. And I don't know what the deal is, like this side looks pretty good, but I had very few that actually germinated. 
Um, and I'm, I can't, I don't know. I don't know what the answer is right there, but I think what I'll do is just pop a few more pea seeds in there because it's pretty early on still. They're not super big. Um, so once the new ones germinate, they'll quickly catch up with the others. Then we've got 60 Walla Walla onions in that bed. There are 72 Italian garlic planted in that one. And I just discovered today that I had the water shut off on both of my garlic beds. Totally forgot to turn them on. Um, and I, I don't think it set them back too much, but they should put on more growth now that they're gonna get regular water. Um, there's really nothing in this bed. I haven't planted anything. There's one lone carrot from last spring that I planted. I'm gonna see how big that thing will grow, <laughs> just for fun. And then in this bed here, we've got rows of shin, 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 karu, karu, shin karota carrot. Oh, hey baby, are you coming out here? Hi. Hey, hey. what are you doing? Come here. Come here, sweetie. What a good boy. You wanna hang out with me for the rest of the tour? He's got his Birkenstocks on, so cute. <laughs> So there's carrots here, and I did cover up some of them with mulch just a little bit. Like you can see the green popping through. Those were really hard to mulch around. Um, so they should look like fuller rows of carrots here after they put on a little bit more growth. You like playing in the dirt, baby? So on this side, we have the Drunken Woman Frizzy Headed Lettuce, and it's coming up really nicely and putting on some really good color. We've got a couple rows of cilantro that are just going like crazy, and a couple rows of bull's blood beets that aren't coming up super great. I don't know if they're getting too much shade from the cilantro or what, but um, we'll get a few of them, which is totally fine. Um, there are six celery plants looking really nice and green. This is Sunset Lettuce. Let me get close so you can see the color. Isn't that so pretty? I love it. In this bed right here, we have uh, spinach. And the big spinach is from last summer. And the new spinach is coming up now. The parsnips are coming up beautifully. These were fairly hard to mulch around as well because they are so small. Then we've got more Italian garlic, more Walla Walla onions. We've got golden sweet peas, which are looking so great. That's why I was a little like, I don't know, confused as to why the blizzard snow peas didn't do so well, because these are looking so good. Uh, there are some radishes there that I did thin out today. And then in this bed, I haven't planted anything. There is a lemon thyme from last year, and I do have a pot of chives right there. So it is looking pretty good so far this spring. So that's it for this video, you guys. I'm really happy with all I got done this afternoon because I honestly only had a couple hours to get all the stuff done that we got done in this video. So anyway, now we are gonna go make some dinner and probably hang out outside for the rest of the evening because that's what he likes to do 24 seven. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and we will see you in the next one, bye.